so my soccer career started 18 years, well, spanned for 18 years. Um, when I started, I was four years old, and I was playing all different kinds of positions at the time. Uh, it started in the house league level, and then finally progressed through to the rep level at about 13 years old, which is where you play through city and you do your thing there. And then finally I took it to the professional level when I was 22. Now, throughout this 18 year career, I had the chance of experiencing the entire spectrum of soccer. I got to see it here in North America, which was a much more physically demanding game where you had to be in great, great shape. And then I also had the privilege of experiencing it in Italy where I got to play for a third division club, which was a much more technical demanding game. Now over that period of, I guess, time when I was playing there, I noticed a pattern with some of the players that I played with, especially here in Ontario. I got to play with some of the best players that this province had to offer. A lot of them went on now to play for the MLS, like for MLS teams, and a lot went to play in Europe. Even a couple that are playing now for our national team, which is absolutely amazing. But there's a pattern that I noticed with these individuals that all of them possessed. And the thing was with me with soccer, I didn't start till I was 13 playing at that rep level, whereas these guys started playing there at about eight or nine years old. So for me, I was technically a late bloomer in the game. But if there's one thing I could say after experiencing this entire part of soccer, was that everyone in that competitive mindset was one person on the field and one person off the field. On the field, these guys that I, were playing, that I was playing with were some of the most driven and aggressive individuals you could imagine. You know, you put a brick wall in front of them, they'd run right through it just to get to their goals. Now off the field, including myself, we were completely different individuals. We were pretty much everything that we were not on the field. We were very emotional which in performance, a lot of you know, there's pretty much no room for. We were very loose-ended, we were very easygoing, we weren't as driven, per se, towards getting that end result where we were more laid back. Now, today, I work with some of the most unique and elite athletes as well as CEOs for businesses. I help them with their mindset and their physical fitness. For my athletes, I help them get stronger, for my business developers, I help them get fit to have a bit more energy. But with both of them, I work with their minds. And it's not a sports psychologist type of job where we're helping them visualize and go through those kinds of emotions, but more so, we're really involved with their lifestyles. Now, with this crossover, what I've seen is that these elite individuals are displaying the exact same patterns that we were as athletes. They're one person in their place of work and they're another person out of it. See, the thing is, is, I like to see this as what I call a performance mindset, or what a lot of people know as an alter ego. Now, I understand that having an alter ego for some could be controversial at times, because it almost implies that you wear a mask, if you will, or some might think you're manipulating another person to see, well, you know, I've gotta be one person so that I can get the results from them. Whereas really, an alter ego or performance mindset is actually one of the most consistent assets you can add to performance. See, I'm a big believer that every person has two types of crafts. Now, a craft to me is something that you work on to specialize in one day. So it could be, you know, you're trying to be the best type of custodian, for example, or maybe the best athlete or the best whatever it is. But you have a craft. Now, I think you have two of them. One in the personal life, which I call your personal life craft, and another one in your performance life, which I call your performance life craft. Personal life craft is anything you can do, essentially, behind closed doors. It's that person you're allowed to be, where you don't have to change anything about who you are, you can just be you. So, it's that off the field, if you will, persona that people display. Now, with your performance life craft, it goes into a different, more uncomfortable environment because now you're being pulled out of where you'd like to be, which is usually the house. And you're asked to do some things that are out of your comfort zone at times. For example, some people might be very quiet individuals at home where at work they have to be a very assertive leader that's in charge of a big group of people. So with this 
alter ego, if you will, or performance mindset, what I have a lot of our athletes doing is understanding who they are in one environment and understanding who they are in another. Because now they can do what they have to do at the most elite levels. And the big dilemma that gets addressed here that a lot of people, especially in today's world, with technology and everything going on are starting to address is that work-life balance. I know a lot of people in here probably have seen this before where someone just can't put their job down when they come home. Or maybe you're on the contrary, that person or a student who's asked to drop all their personal matters when they come into school. But how do you do that? How are you able to just change on a dime like that? Well, now it comes back to this persona, if you will, or performance mindset, where you have to understand that you're going to one environment and you've got to be the best version of yourself there. And then you've got to be at home where you're the best personal version of yourself as well. Because I know, for a lot of the youth athletes we deal with, the problem they face is when they come to soccer or hockey or whatever it is, they're not fully focused. And the thing is, is that self-esteem self -esteem in general is something that's very tough to deal with at times. And sports contribute a big part to that self-esteem. You go to your sport, you do well, you feel good, it can turn a terrible day into a great day. Now, going there, a lot of these athletes have a problem dropping the problems outside of sports, be it exams, be it schoolwork, be it stuff going on at home, and vice versa. When they get home, now they have a problem sometimes dropping the sport, or maybe what happened at school, or whatever the case may be. So with this performance mindset, it's really allowing them to let go and understand who they are across each environment. See, I'm a big believer that you have to be happy at what you're doing because that is what breeds quality. Because at the end of the day, if you're an elite performer, you're after quality. You're after results, and results are only found by quality work. Now, my grandfather, um, it was a very influential man in my life, and he always used to tell me, he goes, Matthew, whatever you do in life, doesn't matter if you're a hairdresser, doesn't matter if you're an athlete, doesn't matter what you're doing, just make sure you're damn good at it. Because if that's the case, the money part, all that will follow. And he's right. It comes down to understanding what you've got to do to make yourself happy. Now, going back to this performance mindset, where a lot of these athletes or performers are feeling unfulfilled, if you will, is when they go to work, they don't get the result that they want, and then they come home and they carry it home. Now what happens? Well, we walk through the door, we're not able to drop what happened there, we come home and we take, the, take it out on a loved one, or maybe a family member, or a friend, or whatever the case may be, and now we feel even more unfulfilled because, well, we just took it out on someone we like. We just took it out on someone we care about. And vice versa, when we're going to work and we can't focus, we get there, we have a rotten day, and we think, well, now what? So having this alter ego, it's not a matter of being someone else or manipulating or anything like that. It's understanding what strengths you possess in one part of your craft, your personal life craft, and using it fully when you're there. Fully being engaged, fully having that quality engagement while you're over there. And then carrying it over to your performance life craft, turning it on and saying, now I can be this person for the bit. But when I'm here now, I can fully be engaged in what I've got to do. It's the same as students when they come to school, or when they go play sports, or even professionals, when you go to work and then you have to come home. Because a lot of you know as well, who, does, who do take their work home, you're doing work at home, but it's not the same environment you have. You can't influence the same group of people at home that you've got to influence at work. So how do we do this? Well, we turn it off. And when we turn it off, we're able to fully come into that zone, if you will. We're able to fully focus now. And this is where we're seeing these great results with our athletes, is that they're fully able to focus on the task at hand. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum and knowing your strengths, we have, obviously, weaknesses. And the thing about weaknesses is that I like to see, or have my athletes view them one of two ways. Number one, you can see it as, yes, this is my shortcoming, and this is what I've, you know, I'm not that great at, so I'm not going to focus on. Or on the opposite end, this is what I've got to work on. Now, I have the privilege of knowing a very elite NHL agent, and we were having a conversation the other day, and he goes, you know what, Matt? The problem with sports now is that every athlete is told to focus on their strengths, and only their strengths. When I used to be, and this is him saying, when I used to be a football coach, 
I used to have a year-end meeting with all my athletes, and I would say, okay, what do you got to work on this summer? And they would say, well, coach, here's my weakness. Here's how I'm going to address it. Here's what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to go work on it this summer. Now he goes, when I see this whole thing with the entitling part or whatever, everyone knows what they're strong at. And they'll say, well, coach, I'm going to get stronger at this, and I'm going to get stronger at that, and the weaknesses, I'm going to forget about it. And then he goes, what this leads to now is when we ask them to do something that's uncomfortable because it's their shortcoming, they don't want to do it. Now we get, well, no, you know what, coach, I'm this kind of player, not that kind of player. And this is something I even see myself working with youth athletes is that it even crosses over to, to the school part. Well, you know, I'm great at math, so I'm going to go all in on math. I'm going to forget about, you know, the English part, and I'm just going to do math. Because I know for sure math is what it's going to be. Now, if I was, I was that kind of student. I was that kind that was going to go all in on psychology. And I was just going to go to school just to become a psychologist. But I just decided to step out of my comfort zone in my last year of school and said, you know what, I'm going to try kinesiology. And kinesiology is ultimately what led me to doing this. So, because I've been doing that performance mindset part, the alter ego, and knowing who I am and understanding my strengths, but more so overcoming those weaknesses, it's really helped me to say, okay, well, you know what, even if I go into this and it's not the greatest, I don't have to worry about it when I go home. It's over. It's done. What am I going to do at home? I'm going to sit there and twiddle my thumbs about it? No, you can't. And the same way when you go to work or go into your place of work, you're able to drop what's going on at home. And that's where you hear a lot of people say, well, you know what? Hockey's my release. Or maybe for the more academically inclined, you know, math is my release. Or poetry is my release. Or whatever the case may be. So I'm not saying to per personify this alter ego to almost manipulate or put a mask on or whatever the case may be there. I'm saying to do so so that you're able to fully focus and get everything you need to get out of that task. Don't shortcome yourself by not being able to focus, because realistically, that is the easiest thing that you can do with all of this. Now, finally coming in, coming in with everything here, it's, you know, I get, like I was saying, to work with some of the greatest young athletes coming up right now. I work with a lot of them that are very talented, but more so going through the school system. And a lot of them are, they, they question me. They make sure that what I'm doing is not just me talking. It's actually being a practitioner of my craft. And that's the same thing that I ask them to do. It's if you're going to do it, just be consistent with it. So it's not a matter of understanding what's your weakness or just what your strength is. It's a matter of personifying something that you can do consistently day in, day out. Thank you.